Insha'Allah, today we'll be talking about um, uh, patience and uh, gratitude or giving thanks. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised those who are patient. And um, He said something that is unique about patient people. Um, that He said, إِنَّمَا وَفَصَّبْرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ لِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ um, every amal has a well-known reward, except sabr. We don't know exactly the reward because Allah said, "Inna Indeed, those who are patient will be giving the reward, un- the reward unlimited. We don't know how much it's un- um, uh, counted. And that's why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Siyam. He said, Illa sawm fa inna huli wa ana ajdi bihi. Not tell us what is the word of sabr, of, of sawm, because a sabr and his full sawm. Siyam and sabr are linked together. And, um, wa ana ajdi zi anna alladhina sabaru ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu yamaloon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that those who were patient, we will give them the reward based on the best of what they used to do. Um, their patience and, um, uh, you know, giving up their, what they like or doing what they don't like. And those who accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to them will be um, rewarded based on the best of what they used to do. Um, al Ghazali actually talked also about Haqiqat uh, al-Sabr What is the Haqiqat al-Sabr? What is the definition of Sabr? How do you understand Sabr? Of course Sabr is not fun Sabr is always difficult Right? And we don't like to be patient Because we are impatient by nature Our nature is impatience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلٍ I know someone read it as it's an Egypt like that. Doesn't know how to read. It's Ajab, not Ajab. Ajab means calf. But Ajab, Qudiqa al insanu min Ajab. Ajab means rush. We always like to rush. We don't like to wait in long lines, right? We don't like slow traffic. We, don't, we want everything to get done quickly. And our children actually are more impatient than us. I don't know, maybe. They, got used to touching things and things happen, right? Now we don't open doors, we just use remote, things open, right? The car open by itself, doors open, the garage open, and things you come in, now you talk to your you know, device, they turn the light on and off, everything happens quickly and you know, when the when things become a little slow, the Wi-Fi strength is not that big, you know, people Suffer, right? But we consider this to be a source of suffering because the uh, signal is so slow. But خلق الإنسان من عجل. We وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا. The insan, we most of us are, are, are impatient because we don't like to resist what we like, what we desire. What we desire, we want to get it here and now, right? was not strong enough to some say that it's a different different interpretation um, so by nature we don't like patience patience is not fun it's not something that we desire That's why we need to always remind each other of haqq and sabr. We need sabr. You know, we are not in Jannah. Inshallah, in Jannah, you don't have to practice sabr because everything is available immediately, right? What you desire is there. You don't have to uh, take an appointment or 
you know, um, stand in long lines to get what he wants. No, what we want, God comes to you. But here in dunya, it's a dar of shaka, ta'ab, kabad, khalaqna insana fi kabad. That's why we need sabr. As Imam Ghazali said, uh, as he talked about tawbah, he said sabr also requires knowledge, hal, and amal, action. Right? He said uh, it's important also to know the tartib uh, between malaika and, and human and animals. Animals don't need patience, right? Angels don't need patience because angels are by nature are created to and attract to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have desires, right? So they what they desire is there. They desire the ibadah, they desire the tasbih, they desire the obedience, it's all available. That's why they don't need patience, right? Animals also don't need to practice patience because what drives them is their desire, right? The desire to eat, desire to reproduce, the desire to protect themselves and take care of their children. That's the, what they desire, right? And you cannot ask a lion to be patient when he sees a deer around, right? And why? He won't be patient. Well, why? Why patient? I can run and get it, eat it. So, so they don't practice patience. But humans, they do need patience because they are imperfect, right? And they are not like angels, and they are not totally like animals. They are. They have also desires. So the angels don't have desires, but they are perfect. We are not perfect. And we are not all only animals. We share with animals a desire, but we also need to control these desires. That's why we need patience. And that's why those who don't practice patience, they live their life like animals. Right? They want to fulfill desires at all times and anyways. So he said, Al Insan, when we are young, um, When we are young, we are babies, we have one desire only, which is eating, right? Babies, when you know when they're hungry, they cry, right? They make a lot of noise, right? Because they desire to eat, they're hungry. And as they grow, another desire comes in, the desire to play, to have fun, right? And then the desire to look good. You like, you see these young boys and girls, they put, you know, all these gels and they, you know, look in the mirror and look at their hair and what they dress and what they wear and so on. And then the sexual desire comes in, right? And then the desire of position and power and all these desires come as we grow, right? Um, but he said the good news is that we have to... Um, uh, uh, positive powers. One, the power of, of Hidayah. Hidayah, right? knowledge, ma'rifatullah, to know Allah and to know the hereafter and know about the Prophet وسلم, and so on. And another power that gives, uh, another resource of good that gives power to us. Because knowing is one thing and, and doing is something else. So we need these two uh, sources of power, like the angels who give us Hidayah and give us strength to do uh, what is right. Um, So the nur of the hidayah is, is important and also the, the strength to do what is right and not to do what's wrong is also important. So these two things together he called them ba'ith of diyana. The ba'ith, the motive of, of, of motivation of doing good. This goes against the motivation to do evil, that the, or, or the motivation of the desire, not, not to do evil, but the motivation of whether that's anger, uh, sexual, eating, or all these kind of desires. Shahwat al-Badmi wal Faraj, as you call it. So these uh, two powers or motivations are, are, are against each other. Right? That's why there's always constant conflict between the bad and Diana, the power of good, knowledge, and power, or, 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 or will to do good, against the power of the Desire. So it's like two armies fighting each other. Sometimes the Ba'ath of Diana wins. And this is when with this what's called Mujahada. This jihad, internal jihad going on. So he said that's why we need this patience all the time. We always need patience all the time. So he said the definition of sabr for him is um, 
عبارة عن ثبات the strength of باعث الدين في مقابل باعث الشهوة the desire versus the religion the knowledge and uh, doing the الأمان وعمل الصالحات يعني إيمان and عمل الصالحات so um, then he uh, talked about uh, how, how do we understand that patience is half of our religion there are two ways to understand this as the Prophet said he said if you look at the word iman as, as, as yaqeen right and the other is patience Yaqeen means knowledge. We believe in Allah, we believe in the Prophet, we believe in what's right and what's wrong. And then patience that's required to do the right thing and stay away from the wrong thing. In this sense, Iman is to, um, uh, you know, can we divide Iman into two, two things? One is Yaqeen and the other is Sabr. It's like Iman and Amal. And Amal means to do good and stay away from evil. And these two needs Sabr. Another way to understand the sabr nisful iman is um, that whatever we face in our life is either something that benefits us and, or something harms us. So we need patience to do what benefits us. And we also need pa patience to stay away from what harms us. To do ta'a, to pray tiyam, to give sadaqa, you need patience. Right? To stay away from haram, things that we desire, that also requires patience. So in this sense, Iman is nothing but sabr and shukr, being thankful and being patient. All right? So in this sense, also sabr is half of the Iman. All right? Um, he says also sabr may have different names. It depends on the situation. He said there are two kinds of sabr. Sabr uh, badani, the, the patience of the body. Uh, this is when, when you do exercise or you have to do the, some hard work. Your wife asks you to do to this, wash the dishes or to cook or something like this. Or you really do something that requires you know, uh, physical work. Um, or a sabr nafsi, psychological patience. Um, so if we resist or we practice sabr against hunger and thirst and the sexual desire, then this is called iffa, right? And when you get so angry and you really want to go and break something or hurt someone and you hold yourself, what do you call this? It doesn't have another name. It's patience, of course, it's patience, right? But it has a specific name. Kazm al in Arabic, Kazmin al to suppress your anger. That's also a form of patience. At the time of war, when people stand firm and fight hard, what do we call this? Bravery, right? So bravery is also coming out of sabr. If you are content with what you have, if you see everybody around having much more what you have, but you are content, this contentment also is a form of sabr in this situation, to be happy with what you have. That's patience, right? Um, if someone told you a secret, I told you, don't tell anybody, you know, I want to tell you something, but don't tell anybody. And then you get this secret, but you cannot hold it, right? It's difficult to keep the secret. You can see people talking and you know the secret, no, 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 by the way, you are wrong. I know, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to keep the secret. So, you need a lot of sabr not to say the secret of someone. That's called kitman, kitman is serious, right? Keep it inside. Um, If you have what it takes, if someone angers you and you don't respond and forgive, that's called hell or forbearing. And this forbearing also is a form of sabr, right? So Ibn Ghazali said that sab sabr in, 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 in different situations have different names, but they all um, are branches of, of sabr or different names of sabr. Also, sabr regarding the, 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 the quwa or ta'af of, of, of practicing sabr, the, the strength or the weakness. He said that sometimes, 
but people have no uh, it's simple for them is, is kind of, of easy they got used to it they trained themselves to always control themselves to draw the limit and discipline themselves not to cross the limit this is the level of the high uh, highly spiritual people uh, subdukeen الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَابُ So sabr for them is not as difficult as it is for many. Right? يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ أَرْجَعِي إِلَى رَبِّكِ رَضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً This nafs mutma'inna. They got used to it. Salah, qiyam does not really require of sabr. They enjoy it. Right? Maybe in the beginning as one of the salahin said that I, I did mujahada against myself for 20 years. No, sorry. So he said, for one year, I, I struggled. I pushed myself to pray there. Then I enjoyed it for 20 years. One year of suffering and mujahada, right? Then enjoyment for 20 years. So for them, it is not, it's not, Qiyamul Layl for them is not, is not, does not require suffering. For the beginners, it takes out of suffering. You have to push yourself. You have to remember the reward of Jannah, and, you know. And, 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 and maybe you can find someone to pray with you to encourage you. But after this, it does not require suffering. Because you know, once you enjoy it, there's no suffering, is not needed anymore, right? So he said this is the high level of, of spiritual people. But for also another case, the exact opposite. When, when people give up, they, don't, they are unable to do any suffering, zero suffering. So they just decide to, you know what, let go. They do everything they, they desire. They have no suffer to pray, they have no suffer to give sadaqah, they have no suffer to do anything. They're extremely lazy and they, they just lost control. This is the exact opposite of the first group of people. Um, there's no mujahada in yani, Yaqi, go and pray, ah, it's, it's, it takes a lot of time to go and pray. It's cold outside. I wish, inshallah. Yeah, it's prayer time. You should go and pray. Ah, I wish I could pray. But laziness. And laziness, of course, we cannot achieve anything in our life with laziness, right? We don't, you know, the same people who are so lazy to pray are very active when it comes to making money. You know, they get up in the morning, they go to work, and go extra time, and they make more money. Right? Are no no room for laziness here, right? Because the goal is clear. But when it comes to doing some ibadah, no, they are too lazy. And the third group of people are the people who um, have both. They, as he said earlier, uh, that خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا. Sometimes they win the war against laziness. Um, and they, they um, practice patience to do the good thing or practice patience not to do the bad things. But sometimes they lose the battle. You know, sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. And this is the majority of us. The majority of Muslims are among these people. Sometimes they are patient enough to say, no, 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 stop, that's haram. I cannot do that. Or you should fast extra. Pray. You did not pray for Qiyam for a week. It's now it's time for you to, to pray. I have to pray like four or eight rakas clear. They push themselves to it, right? So they are in between. Sometimes they are strong, sometimes they are weak, and they of all also need more mujahada. Um, uh, um, and some actually said, Bad um, al-Arifin, he said, People of sabr are, are three kinds, and we talk about three levels. Sabr, and then rida, and then mahabba. Sabr is something bad happens, or you don't like something, but you have to do it, that's called sabr. But there's rida, it's higher than sabr. You are, you are happy with what you are Allah, so you have rida, you have this contentment, you are submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is sabr and higher than sabr is rida, satisfaction. Alhamdulillah, inna illahi wa inna ilaha rajul. But there's a higher level than sabr and rida, it's called mahabba, love. You love whatever Allah brings. That's why some of them said that 
equal to me. To be wealthy or to be poor, to be healthy, to be sick. And anything that comes from Allah is good. I like it. Allah and others said that I like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for me than what I choose for myself. Right? So I like this, but Allah give me something else. Okay? So it's increase my mahabba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they said that 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 uh, patience is the darajah to ta'ibin, yeah, tarku shahwat to leave to abandon your desires is the level of uh, those who repent. And the rida is darat al zahideen, those practice abstinence. And yeah, they, they just take little from this dunya. But mahabba darat al siddiqeen. Um, Imam al Ghazali talked also about something that's very interesting when it comes to patience. He said that we need patience at all times. Um, usually, when we think about patience, we think about hardship difficulties and but he said no we need patience at all times because what happened what 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 we go through in our life what we experience is either what we desire or or or, or something happened that we we like and or something that we don't like what we like like being healthy having a job having decent income having family we like all these things right right so do we need patience here yes he said we need patience so if I, if Allah give me so much wealth and alhamdulillah, a decent place and decent career, decent education, and why, why do we need to practice sabr there? He said, you also need to practice sabr here, otherwise you, you don't want to indulge yourself in all these desires and forget that makes, eventually would, would make all these beautiful things would make you forget about the hereafter. Taking so much of this dunya is no good. So you need to practice sabr actually to put some limit to yourself. Right? Adopt enough self-discipline. Because the more wealth we have, the more access we have to ma'asiyah. Right? People are wealthy, people can travel around the world, they can do what they really want, right? So, so he said, even when you get what you desire, you also need to practice patience to use it wisely. To use your wealth, your health, your life wisely. Otherwise, you keep going and going and going, and then this will take you far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will make you sometimes feel that I'm self-sufficient. I don't need any, anything. I have everything. So the patience here that he's talking about is to be able to use these blessings wisely, otherwise these blessings can can become a source of troubles for us. Is this point clear? So um, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Let not your wealth and children avert you or distract you from the remembrance of Allah. Wealth, family, a job, they are all blessings. But these blessings can become a curse for some people when they misuse them. So even when we have what we like, we have to practice uh, patience. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna. Right? Money and health and children is, is fitna. It's, it's, it's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we have to... Um, uh, be patient. Al-waladu, hadith, al-waladu, al-waladu means children. Walad or bint, yani, mish bas al-walad, al-walad, al-awlad refers to children. Al-aladu, majbanatun, mabkhalatun, mahzana. Al-waladu, or al-awlad, majbana, majbana makes us coward. Oh, kids, I take care of my kids. You are less courageous when you have children. Mabkhala. When you have children, you will become more stingy, right? Mahzana. Mahzana means bring a lot of worry and anxiety. That's naturally in most of the cases here. You see people before they have children, they are maybe can share and give and think. But now have children, you have to think about education, think about higher education, think about their marriage, think about you have to save or don't spend because you have to take care of your children. 
children makes us uh, more stingy. That's that's part of, of, of our nature because we think so much about them. Majbana, 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 jubn. By the way, jubn in Arabic means peace. Jubn, right? And jubn also means cowardice. What many I will become an hamd or hazm. I will become an agz or kasab. I will become the jubn, right? So the word jubn. You call it Janas Kamil. You have a word that has multiple meanings. Sometimes they have nothing to do with each other, right? Like the word Dahab. Dahab is a fa'l mal. It's past tense. So Dahab means gone. And Dahab means gold, right? So the word Jubn, Jubn uh, means cowards, or also means cheese in Arabic. Right? Like this uh, someone who. Um, was taking a picture of his family and said, say it, Jubin. <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, when we have children, we have wife, we have family, you have a house, you have a job, then this also requires some patience. And, um, and of course, ma la yuathq al hawa wa tabi. This is, is, is can, can, we can divide it into three things. One is ta'at and ma'asi and masa'il. To do good deeds, we need patience, as we mentioned before. To make hajj or uh, give sadaqah or pray, qiyam, we need patience. If you want to stay away from haram, haram is available, you can do it, but stop yourself. That requires patience. Or masa'il and nawa'il, and like musibah, yani. crisis, calamities happen. That also requires and then he, he, he talked in more details about this and, and he said that you need patience when you do good deeds because sometimes um, he said the nafs, nafs our, our human nature, we, we, we are more inclined to divinity attributes. We don't like to submit to someone or some, some anything else. And this is actually what we see in our, our liberal culture, our liberalism, individualism, that you don't submit to anybody. You are the master of the universe. No other authority should be higher than you. Family, custom, culture, religion, even God. Right? So, uh, for, since the, the French Revolution until now, uh, this idea of individualism, uh, you know, and, and we talked about Nietzsche before, that when he said we have to kill God, he, the Superman should not submit to anybody. And some look at religion as a form to control people. The main goal that they claim, the main goal of religion is to control it. The opium of the nations, as um, the, uh, Stalin or Lenin said. All right, so, um, so, but we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We have a lot of rules, we have a lot of, of do's and don'ts, we have the authority of Allah, right? And um, um, that's why we need to practice patience when we, the servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to know that Allah is, is, is watching, Allah is observing. Allah will hold us accountable. Allah has this supreme sovereignty and authority. And He's the judge. That's why we remember every day, Malik Yawmiddin. Uh, right? This Yawmiddin, uh, He's the Malik. He's the only judge, the only authority. That day is His day. So we always think about this day. We always think about the day when we stand before Him for judgment. Right? Um, that takes a lot of suffering. Ba'd al-Arifin said, Ma min nafsin. إِلَّا وَهِيَ مُضْمِرَةً مَا أَظَرَ فِرْعَوْنَ You know what Fir'aun said? قَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمْ الْأَعْلَى He said it. But many people don't say it by word, but say it by action. It's inside, it's deep inside. I am the supreme. I am the most knowledgeable. I am the most, high, most intellectual. I am the smartest. I am the best. It's inside of everybody. Inside of everyone. That's why envy and and, you know, anger and hatred. Because sometimes we feel that someone is better than me and I cannot do anything. So I just hate him from deep inside. Right? 
anger, if you can do something, that's anger. But if you cannot sometimes you cannot do anything. So that becomes hasad al haqd yeah. Hatred and envy. So in, in deep inside of everyone, I am the supreme. Frown said it good, I'm a Bukubulana. But sometimes people have it in their hearts. Um, so And that's why sometimes people are small dictators, are big dictators, we know about them, right? But are small dictators. But they are practicing this dictatorship based on the amount of authority they have. The bigger authority, the more dictatorship. He's only, the only authority the domain is his house. So he's showing dictatorship on his wife and his children, treating them like, like animals. Or if he got some position in, in, in the hierarchy, in, in the job, in the workplace, he actually practiced dictatorship on those who are less than him. And the higher he goes in, in authority and power, the more damaging his, his dictatorship is. So we have so many Hitlers and so many Stalin and so many Lenin and so many um, who else. I don't want to call names of other dictators, you know. Right, so, but these dictators, if they don't have this power, they have half or one tenth of this power, they would have been also dictators. And some of the dictators were practicing dictatorship only in their home. If they were in the position of these dictators, they would have practiced this, this, this power uh, or, or abused this power um, in, in, uh, with the authority they have. So, believe me, there are so many Hitlers. Well, they did not get the chance that Hitler got. He caused so much damage because he has so much power. Right? So he, he said that, that to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to humble yourself, which is again part, again is our human nature, to submit, to surrender, to go, to bow down. Right? And he says when it comes to uh, uh, Ibadat, some that ibadat is difficult. It's difficult. Giving money in charity is difficult. Um, fasting is difficult, um, especially in the summer. Um, praying, Isha, Fajr, and Tahajjud is difficult. Um, and he said some ta'at are, are difficult for different reasons. So he said, for example, um, some ibadat is difficult because of our laziness, like praying on time. And some ibadat are difficult because of stinginess. For stingy, it's difficult to give zakah, right? And some ibadat is difficult because of all of these things, like hajj, which requires spending and some determination, right? To practice patience when you do good deeds or make ta'a or ibadah, you need to practice patience before, during, and after the ibadah. And this is how amazing Moses well, looks at analyzes these these things very uh, very carefully. He said before ta'a, before you do the ibadah, you need patience to um, um, purify your intention. You before you make the ibadah, you may just make sure I'm going to do this hajj for the sake of Allah. That's why Rasulullah when he made the talbiyas, Allah la bayk Allah mahajjad la riya afihi wa la suma. To do it for the sake of Allah only, even before we start doing it, before the community knows that you're going for Hajj, or before you spend this amount, amount of money, you know, to build a masjid or anything. You have to practice sabr before you do the ta'ah itself. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ As he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And um, while you are doing the ta'ah, then you have to also practice patience. Not to be lazy and to do it right, to perfect it, to make wudu, make it right. Not like our children just run and just splash in the face and they are like, oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm done. Oh man, just go. That's not a good wudu, just do it right. Uh, some people, adults, do that. Ayy kalam, yani, just very lousy. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Sami'an Dal, Hamid, Allah Akbar. Uh, do you remember what, what surah you, did you read in Dhuhr? Ah, uh, I don't remember. No, I just finished Dhuhr, so... Ask your children this question after like, 
Oh, Russell Brick. So what did you read in the first rock hour, do you mean? Oh, I, don't, I read something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> Sometimes we do the same thing. Just we do it because we just want to do it. Did a lousy job, خلاص. No. You have said you have to be patient. You do it, do it right. No. Okay. Um. Ni'ma ajr al-amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ni'ma ajr al-amin. What amazing and good the reward of the amalin and the lina sabr. The amal requires sabr. So before you do it, do it for good intention. When you do it, do it right. And then after you do it, you need to also do patience, to practice patience. How? When you are done with it, you also, in some sort of patience is required there. Can you guess? Do not talk about it. Do not talk so much about it. You know, Alhamdulillah, this Hajj, this is the fourth Hajj. MashaAllah, this, we did this, we did that. Alhamdulillah, I just came yesterday from fundraising event to, uh, for this, and Alhamdulillah, I give this. It's, 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 it's all typical, it's part of our nature. When you do something little like this, we like to talk so much about it. Right? Pray to rakahs before Fajr, and you want to. The, the, the entire world know about it. <laughs> you, you cannot keep it inside. And um, this is sabr when you do ta'am. And sabr from doing masaya is, he said, even more difficult. It's even more difficult. Um, because the shaitan uses shahawat, yani, ma'rifa, knowledge, and amal, right, right, good, doing righteous good deeds. So again, it's the desire that the, the junood, the, uh, the soldiers of the shaitan is the shahawat. So shaitan always uses shahawat against us. Okay, empowers it. And sometimes they won, they, they win. Okay, this is when we, our patience is so weak. Um, another kind of of um, of patience that we have to practice in, that this has nothing to do with our um, choice. Yeah, sometimes we choose to pray. So we need time. Uh, so we need, sorry, we need patience to, to pray, right? Uh, we see haram things that we can do, but we, we don't do it. That's also a choice. We make a choice. But sometimes you have no choice. Someone harms you. Right? There's no choice here. And our Quran tells us about the prophets and how patient they were uh, for the other and the abuse. And harm that they receive from their people. We will be patient. Again, it's what you are doing to us. Right? Um, one day Rasulullah was dividing money uh, among Muslims, and one of them, a Bedouin guy, uh, and he said, This Qisma, this way of distributing this money is not for the sake of Allah, it's not for the sake of Allah. Now what? It is Rasulullah who he gave people based on their needs. It's not, it's not fair. Not fair? What are you talking about? You're talking about Rasulullah. They are Rasulullah and he is not giving according to the way of Allah, no. And Rasulullah saw suddenly looked at his face and they saw his face turn red. He was angry, so Allah said, but he did not do anything but saying that, Yarhamullah Akhi Musa, Fahad Udi Rakhtan Hadam, may Allah have mercy on Musa, my brother. His people used to abuse him more than this, and he used to be patient. Da'adahum wa tawakkal ala Allah. Ignore their adha, their harm. Tawakkal ala Allah. Don't respond to it. Be patient. فاصبر على ما يقولون وهجرهم هجرا جميلا ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذن كثيرا 
A lot of other will hear. A lot of abuse. Just be patient. So, and the, the, another kind of, of things that requires patience is, um, the, you know, the crisis that happens um, to us, losing people who love our, or being um, sick or losing one of our limbs or um, losing our job or our property, all these things. Um, Basaid, it's bala from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that requires also, uh, also uh, sabr. Abu Sulaiman said, Wallahi ma nasbiru ala ma nuhib, fa kayfa nasbiru ala ma nakra. To be patient regarding what we like is difficult. How about what we don't like? It's even more difficult. Right? And talking about patience is different from practicing patience. Anybody can speak about patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, uh, give us the strength in the difficult times. And this lady who lost someone she, from her family and she was wailing and um, shouting and crying and the Prophet he said, Taqillah wa spirit, be patient. She said, get away from me, you don't know what's happening to me. And when he left, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they told her that, no, who was talking to you? It's the Prophet And she was so shocked and she went to apologize. She did not see him. She heard the voice, someone saying, be patient. Taqillah wa spirit, fear Allah and have taqwa and patience. She said, get away from me. You, don't, you, you are not suffering like me. You don't know the pain that I'm going through. So the Prophet ﷺ, of course, did not argue with him, just left him. And then she came to him, said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll be patient. Then he said, Innama sabru and the sabmati ula. Sabr, the real sabr, is shown when it hits you, when you get the bad news. Inna lillahi wa inna ilaha adra. And that's why one of the Salihin said something that I, 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 I personally consider to be a piece of wisdom. When he said that, well, we should not be surprised when bad things happen because we have been told in this dunya a lot of bad things will happen. So we should not be surprised. Be ready, be prepared. Every day passes by that's your alhamdulillah healthy. You can walk and talk and, and go around and you can you have your family and you have your um, you know, house and your you know, everybody is sound, you have enough food, and you are living in peace and security. It's a happy, it's a will be. Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God forbid something happened and something will happen. Nobody will live forever. Nobody will enjoy his family forever. I mean, people will lose loved ones. It will happen. We all know that. But when it happens, sometimes we are super emotional and we don't think properly. Many people in the time of deep sadness, they, they, they approach 100% emotion, zero rational thinking. But when you have both, when you have a 50-50, that, that's the best. This is what Rasulullah did when he lost his son. You know, he cried, of course. He has, he has to show emotion. It's, it's, it's emotional, highly emotional event. It was sad and he cried to Allah and said, Ya Rasulullah, what is this? He said, this is rahmah. Inna al-ayna talba'u inna al-qalba lahzan. What we say, nothing but what please Allah. Inna illa wa inna ilaha ajra. Well prepared. Ready. Sad, of course we get sad. But we understand this dunya, this imperfect life, this short life. Allah told us that he will test us by things we don't like. Abashir al-Sabri. I will stop here, inshallah, and uh, if you have any um, comment or question, inshallah, we'll be um, happy to take it. I just want to end with this beautiful hadith that Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, قال الله عز وجل إذا وجهت إلى عبدي مصيبة في بدنه أو ماله أو ولده when I send a مصيبة or crisis on my abd, 
in his body, his money, or, or, or family. And he received this with sabr jameel. I will feel shy in the day of judgment to put the scale of his amal or to show him his deeds. I will be even shy to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. You know, you know, when you go to a, a doctor for back pain or something and they ask you how, 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 how much pain you have from 1 to 10 today, right? They usually ask you this. They want to know the level of pain. Right? It's oh, seven. It's oh, seven. Wow. It's, it's, it's tough. Must be bad. Or it's five. So when Allah sends the musibah, He knows exactly the level of pain that he, you, you have. And when we know that, actually this, this helps us go through it. Allah knows. And um, Allah just wants to see how would He respond. So when we have Sabr Jameel like Yaqub when he told him Yusuf is dead, Fasabrun Jameel. When he lost the second son, he said, Fasabrun Jameel, Asallah, and yet he didn't mean what he had. Sabrun Jameel. What is Sabr Jameel? They said the Sabr that has no complaint. Don't keep complaining and talk to people. Sabr and Jameel, course. It's painful, um, it's hard, it's difficult, but. Okay, there's sabr, there's rida, and there's mahabba. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are thankful at the time of um, um, prosperity and, uh, and, and patience, the time of, of hardship, and uh, grant us uh, patience so we can uh, practice patience for what we like and what we don't like. Practice patience to make ta'a and to practice patience to stay away from ma'asiyah and to practice patience um, uh, when uh, uh, you know, crisis and calamities befalls us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us among us sovereign so that Allah is the Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. Yes? Well, the, the, the person in his life will need to practice all these kinds of patience. Just Imam Ghazali, what, what I like about him is, is that he, he, he spread the, or extends um, the, 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 the concept uh, itself. And he quotes the ayat and hadith that, that proves that he has very, like, like all philosophers, yeah, they categorize things. And look at the possibilities. So, we as believers, we need to practice all these things. Because, again, when we do ta'a, we need to practice patience. When we, when we um, encounter any haram thing, we have to practice patience. Yeah, when good things happen, we have to practice patience. When bad things happen, we have to practice different kind of patience. So, um, and sometimes, I remember my father, rahimahullah, yani, uh, during very difficult times, he, you know, he told me that, he said, Allah wants you, or Allah wants to give you the reward of patience. So be patient to get this reward. Because if you, if you don't go through these tough times and challenges, then, then your patience is not examined. Alright? Sometimes, um, to get the, the, you know, to get the, 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 the full grade, you need to go through exams. And as I said before, no one likes to go through We don't like exams, right? Not only our children hate exams. Everybody hates exams. You don't want to be pressed or grilled. Or... But to get, to be successful person, then you have to go, you have to take the exam. So the exam itself is not desired, but there's no other way to prove that you are qualified but to go through the exam. So, you'll be examined on the ta'a. You'll be examined to practice sabr against haram things. And Allah told us in the Quran, very clearly, the story, the story of Surah Al-Araf, about the people 
who live on the beach. Uh, and uh, their job is to just to fish. And Allah told them, don't fish on Saturday. On Saturday, the fish come jumping at the shore. They can just get it. Only on Saturday. But the rest of the week, they have to go deep in the sea and spend hours and hours to get some fish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I want to see. I want to test you. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah tells us, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, la yablu annakum Allahu bi shayti min al-saybi, tanaluha ay aydikum wa rimahakum. لِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَافُ اللَّهِ Wild are in ihram, we cannot hunt any wild animals, right? So now Allah said, while you are in ihram, going to Mecca, traveling for days, I will make it easy for you, to, or, or bring these animals close to you. Right? So Allah wants to know, I'm at ihram, I hear this deer who can eat meat for, for a week. Cheap, easy catch. Right? Those who hunt know that. But you are in ihram. You have to say, no, I cannot. So all these deer is coming. Well, it's coming eating with us. You don't have to run after it. But you, know, you are in ihram. You cannot harm any animals. Allah said that in the Quran. By analogy, Allah will bring some money for you that you can take from your company. Nobody will notice it. can take it. And nobody will not say it. Someone will give you money to give it to someone or to give it as a gift. Can you please drop this money in the masjid and say, oh, that's money to yours. You guys come. No questions. And you have all this money under your hands. Donations. Someone write in his will. That when I die, I'll take this money when I die and give it to Sadaq on my behalf. The guy is dead. Or amana. Someone give you an amana and he passed away. You can, you can keep it yourself or go to his wife, his children, say, oh, this is amana, your father gave me this, now it's yours. You can keep it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make sometimes haram things available, accessible to this to you. Right? Oh. Um, so, so again, a sabiru to get this title, then you have to go through the exam. What did Allah say about Ayyub? Alayhi We found him patient. We found him. It's not just look at him. No, he went through the experience. And he passed the exam. And Allah said, We have found him patient. So to be among in the mawafa sabirun Allah will look at what did you do when you lost this? What did you do when you when this happens to you? What did this do? Uh, patient, patient, patient. Successful. Oh, you get the title now. You get, come in the day of judgment, you see as the hadith said that the people of salah will come and get the reward of salah. The people of sadaqah will come and get the reward of sadaqah. But the people of patience will come and the reward will be poured on them. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين 25 الاقامه 25 اوكي